What is heaven? It's an interesting thing that uh, even in the church, I think we spend an, an insufficient amount of time and energy uh, contemplating the blessings and the promises of heaven. And interesting as well that both inside and outside the church, one of the most common fears that shows up when the subject of heaven is approached is the fear that somehow we might be bored. And I think one of the reasons for that is that we have this image uh, of heaven as our uh, what happens when we turn into angels, when we die and we're given this harp and we float around on clouds and we make music. Yeah, that's not it at all. The scripture actually gives us uh, some very powerful glimpses into heaven. One of those is found in Isaiah chapter 6, where Isaiah the prophet is led up into the throne room of God, and he beholds the glory of the angels uh, crying out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, uh, which we see again in the even more extended picture of what heaven is like in the book of Revelation. That's a book that we uh, tend to uh, not give a lot of time and energy to because it is apocalyptic literature. It is difficult to understand, and because of that, we miss out even on the things that are not so difficult to understand. Heaven is that place where we receive the immeasurable blessing of beholding the glory of God. In fact, friends, to the, to the Hebrew mind in the Old Testament, if you were to ask them, what is heaven? They would likely tell you, oh, heaven is the beatific vision. Beatific is just a fancy word meaning blessed. The beatific vision is the vision of God himself where we will see him as he is, not through his created order, not through uh, language, but we will see him face to face. And that, friends, I promise you, will not be boring. We will be engaged in heaven in what we were made for, which is to worship the living God. Heaven is a place, according to the scripture, where there is no more sin, there is no more pain, there is no more death, there is no more sorrow, there is no more sickness. And again, what there is, is the very presence of God. Now, I've done a Ask RC on the nature of hell. And there I affirmed that it may be the most horrible thing about the reality of hell is that it lasts forever. What I want to say to you is that while there are parallels between heaven and hell, the truth is that heaven won't last forever. <gasps> you see, heaven is that place where our spirits go when we die. We are together with Jesus. We are in the presence of God. We are without sin, but we are also without our bodies. And when Jesus returns, he will resurrect our bodies and our bodies and souls will be reunited. Now our souls made perfect and our bodies made perfect, our glorified bodies. And the two, like a uh, lovers uh, coming together on the beach during sunset, will run towards each other, embrace, and they'll never be apart again. And the same thing is true for both heaven and earth. For when Jesus returns, heaven and earth become new and united. The new heavens and the new earth, that's where we'll spend eternity, not in this bodiless place in the sky. But we're going to be embodied. We're going to be perfect. We're going to live forever. Which is why I always say, the story of the Bible, and in fact, the story of history from Genesis 3 to Revelation 22, is trying to get back to the garden, only better. 
every blessing that we had in Eden, every blessing that we would have had had we stayed out of sin in Eden, all of these things will be ours because of the grace of God in Christ, and they will be ours forever. One other thing. Heaven is that place where the bride of Christ, representing every tongue and tribe and nation, will marry as the new Eve, Jesus, the second and last Adam. And we will dance. <laughs>